When I was in the third grade, I went to a boarding school for the first time. My parents were missionaries, and at that time, most missionary children spent at least part of their educational lives in a boarding school away from home. I remember very well the feelings of abandonment and loss that came from traveling to a school in another country and not seeing my parents again for the seven months of our school year. The sense of our family being broken up was acute. So when I read the Apostle John's account of the Last Supper and what Jesus said to his disciples, I can feel a little bit of the loss the disciples began to feel as Jesus spoke of leaving them. But what intrigues me is how Jesus responds to that knowledge. On the evening of the Last Supper, Jesus is under enormous stress. Judas has already gone out to betray him, and he knows that he will probably be arrested sometime in the night and likely crucified the next day. But knowing all that, in John 3, verse 1, John describes Jesus as one who, knowing that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Jesus knew the fears and sorrow of his disciples, and throughout the evening of the Last Supper, he takes pains special pains to reassure them of his love and intention to be together with them again. It's almost like listening in on a conversation between a parent and a child. Here are just a couple of the highlights. First, you belong. Your room will be waiting for you. We fear that our place in the family may be lost. Others will take our place. But Jesus says, don't let this throw you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me. There is plenty of room for you in our Father's house. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get your room ready, I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live. It's almost like he's saying, I'm adding on to the house for you. He's got some building and remodeling to take care of in his father's house so that the disciples will have a place to stay. But when it's done, he's coming back for them. Second, I won't let you forget about me. I'll always stay in touch. Whenever we experience loss, we fear that we'll forget what the other person is like, that we'll lose them altogether. Jesus understands. He doesn't leave us a photograph, but instead, the person who knows everything about Jesus, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will remind us of what Jesus taught, what Jesus is like, and what Jesus is coming back for us. Here's what Jesus said, The friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. He will remind you of all the things I have told you, I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you, peace. I don't leave you the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned, bereft. So don't be upset. Don't be distraught. Throughout that evening of the Last Supper, as Jesus reassured and encouraged his disciples, the idea of going home was present. Jesus reminded them several times, We're going to be apart for a while, and our time apart won't always be easy. But don't forget, I'm coming to get you. You'll come home, and I have plans for you that you can't imagine. He says the same thing to us. Jesus wants us to know how deeply we are loved. Sometimes the truth of his death for our sin doesn't register as love, but simply as tragedy. We may be saddened but not uplifted. The fact is, we're children and need to be told again and again how much Jesus loves us. That's why Jesus took pains to remind the disciples of that. His death is necessary even if we don't quite understand why. But his death is the prelude to joy, his joy and ours. That's what Hebrews 12, 2 tells us. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. How much he longs for us to be at home where he is. How much he wants to be a part of our lives. 
what we look forward to is going home. Many years later, Jesus' best friend wrote, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. 